This video is intended as FMGC Lesson 2, which will demonstrate how we set up the FMGC for an arrival into our destination airfield using the F or PPS structure that Airbus recommend. The F or PPS is what we use for the approach, and it stands for Flight Plan, RADNAV, Progress, Performance, and finally S for Secondary Flight Plan. In this case, we'll have checked the ATIS, which is showing an arrival onto runway 27 left, and we expect the ILS. The quickest way to get to the arrival runway is to select Airport, and it pulls up the destination, and it shows us we expect to land on 27 left, and an ILS can be confirmed via the flight plan here. But what we like to do is select 4 left, in this case, on the arrival runway, and this will show you ILS 27 left with the correct ident of India Lima Lima and the frequency 109.5. At the top of the page, there's a summary showing ILS approach 27 left via Bovingdon. The standard arrival is the Bovington 1 and Bravo with no transition. So that is the correct approach. I'll return to the flight plan. And in this case, I would like to double check that the Bovington 1 Bravo has been set. So I will select flight plan, which will default it back to where we are now. And I will scroll down by selecting the up key and get to the first point on this Bovington 1 Bravo approach, which is Tobit. So cross checking the Lido charts, we can see that the restriction to be a at Tobid at flight level 200 is correctly set here. I can double check that by selecting key 2 right, which will highlight the flight level 200. Or I can simply leave it in flight plan and selecting plan and constraint on the ND, this constraint of flight level 200 will be displayed on your ND screen. The same applies for all the other restrictions. I'll double check Soppit and the track and distance is correct. Sop it to be flight level 150. Scrolling up towards Westcott, showing a track of 143 and 8 miles, and a speed restriction of 250 knots at Westcott. The track is then correct, 119 for 17 miles to bring us towards Bovington. This extra additional point on the flight plan is just simply your speed limit, which in this case is 250 knots below flight level 100. From that point on, I will select the hold into Bovington by selecting a lateral revision to beam Bovington, checking the inbound course, the turn is right, the time is one mile, or the distance, depending on which the hold is based off. In this case, we're expecting to hold, so I'll insert that. And the SOP would be to hold at green dot speed, but quite commonly people will hold at 220 knots also, which uh, will be sensible on occasion because very often, Heathrow will take you off the Bovington hold at 220 knots. So for this reason, I'm going to program 220 knots. I'll put it in the vertical side of the page, which now makes 220 knots our speed restriction at Bovington. From that point on, using plan and constraints, I will check my ND and make sure that the tracks and distances are correct, bringing us all the way in for the ILS onto 27 left. Again, using the Lido chart, I will double check the missed approach is correct. Here we have a missed approach climbing straight ahead for two miles off London to 1,080 feet. Left turn, track 149, out to London, 60 ME, maximum altitude 2,000, and then climbing after that point up to 3,000 feet on a track of 149, or a heading in this case of 149. So that is quickly the flight plan reviewed. I'll go to the RADNAV page now, and checking the chart, I think here it would be sensible to program Bobbington which is Bravo November November, and a frequency of 113.75. In this case, you will see two options, one being 864 miles away and one 146 nautical miles away. The quickest way to figure it out which one you need is usually based off the frequency and the distance. So I'll select Bovington, and I will program in the inbound course, which is 118, into the VOR. On VOR number one, it is a preference, but I would like London for this particular approach. And then for the ADF, of 27 left, most commonly people will program in the ADF in that direction for the missed approach, which in this case is Epsom. Epsom also comes up with an option which is either 165 miles away and a frequency of 316 or 2474 miles away and a frequency of 260, so obviously it's the first one. So now that's the RADNAV done, we've got London, Bobbington and Epsom hard-tuned. The ILS frequency will not need to be hard-tuned by you, it will be automatically selected by the box based off the arrival runway you have programmed into the flight plan. 
So in this case, we have now done the flight plan and the rad nav. I'll move to the progress page. The progress page is showing us cruising at 310 at the moment. And we will put in the bearing and distance to the arrival runway, which is EGLL 27 left. Key 4 right will allow you to program it into this uh, particular window and it will give you a bearing and distance to the airfield and that particular runway. We're not doing a ORNAV approach. If we were, we would check the predictive GPS and all the Ys. In this case, we're just waiting on the plus 15 to appear. And in this point here, you can change that if required for an ORNAV approach to 0.3 nautical miles at this stage. Nav accuracy is high. So now we've completed the F, OR, and P. We'll move on to the second P, which is performance. In the performance for the descent, it is important to make sure your Mach number that you're currently doing, which is decimal 76, is set for the descent phase and a speed as per our SOPs of 280 knots. The next phase comes to the approach page and here we will program in the weather, 1013, 15 degrees and a wind of 270, 10 knots. The MDA then for ILS 27 left, actually a decision height, but we put it into the MDA box and that's 280 feet. Landing conf today will be conf full. If you intended to do a conf 3 approach, now you would select conf 3, but please note the VLS will alter for conf 3, so it's important not to adjust the VAP until you've selected your landing configuration. This is what will appear if you're using conf 3, but as I mentioned, we will use conf full, and you'll note that the VLS will alter now for conf full. The next phase shows us the thrust reduction and acceleration for this uh, approach. The SOP is to have the thrust reduction set at 1,500 feet above the airfield. The acceleration is also the same, but you are permitted to alter that to the missed approach altitude if it is deemed sensible, and the engine out acceleration will be 1,500 feet above the airfield or the MFRA if higher. Now we have the performance page set. We'll move to the secondary flight plan. And in this case, quite simply, we'll put in another option. So I'll copy the active, which copies everything we've just programmed in, and I will put in the ILS onto runway 27 right as our secondary option. ILS 27 right is India Romeo Romeo, 110.3, and I'll line select that here. Note there is no option here to press insert on the secondary. That does not happen. I'll just return to the secondary flight plan, which is all in white, and you can see it's 27 right here. What would be sensible at this stage would be to clean up the secondary flight plan. I'm going to put in the hold of Bovington, and that goes up just prior to the approach. So later on, when we have to activate the approach phase, we'll have a sensible amount of detail in the secondary flight plan. The secondary performance is also double-checked, 1580 and 2000. And we've got 1013 and the DH of 280 feet also programmed. So that is the F or P, P, S, checking the performance, and we'll finish just with our briefing later on with a quick check of the fuel.